The other day, I wandered into a shop that I hadn't seen before that seemed to sell high-end spa and massage products, as well as offering massages themselves. And these products do not appeal to me whatsoever, but I was wasting time waiting for my partner, so I figured, what the hell. The very nice, slightly strange owner of the store called me over and then without asking me first, dribbled some smelly oil on my forearm and then gave me a full arm massage. Um, it was weird. I do not like massages. I don't like strangers touching me. But while I am very loud and aggressive and opinionated here on YouTube, in real life, I am actually very nice and non-confrontational. I know, hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, I swear, I just stood there while this woman kept like flopping my arm around, insisting I relax. And eventually my partner walked by and I called out to him and he walked in looking extremely confused as to what he had just interrupted. And we ran away without buying anything. Um, he smelled my arm and he, he did agree that it smelled nice though. Um, and that, my friends, was my first and only personal experience with essential oils. Um, an essential oil is an oil that's been extracted from a plant. The essential part of it refers to the essence of the plant's fragrance. It's got nothing to do with whether or not we need it. It's not essential like that. It just smells nice. I have no idea what the very nice crazy lady massaged into my arm because there was no discussion before she attacked. Uh, but some common essential oils are lavender, tea tree, lemongrass, things like that. I've never sought them out before because, first of all, I'm not really that into smells. <laughs> um, and second of all, I associate these things with MLMs. Uh, that's multi-level marketing companies. I've talked about them before. They're basically pyramid schemes that have a product that nudges it over it, over the line into legal territory. Um, if you want to know more about that, I made a whole video about it in the blissful before times of 2018, where I called out two shady essential oil companies, Young Living and doTERRA. Uh, fun fact I mentioned in that previous video about uh, young Living, they, the average Young Living seller lost $1,175 in 2016. Great, great company. Good job, boss babes. In that video, I did talk about how essential oil MLMs are not a great investment, but I didn't really get into the pseudoscience that is pushed by some Huns. Uh, so named not because of their relation to Attila, but because they overuse the word Hun as well as emojis um, when they're petitioning future victims to sign up. But the fact is that essential oils are ripe with pseudoscience. People claim all sorts of things about them, like they can cure cancer, which they absolutely cannot, or that they control diabetes, which no, please see an actual medical professional to help control your diabetes. Don't consume essential oils. Uh, but research shows that the only good thing about essential oils is that they smell nice and they can relax you. Um, although you can also achieve that through things like a warm bath or a candle. In another previous video, I did talk about one other bullshit claim made by uh, essential oil peddlers. While California was burning to the ground back in 2017, doTERRA claimed that diffusing their essential oils could clean the air of the wildfire smoke in your house. Spoiler alert, it absolutely does not do that. Uh, if anything, diffusing essential oils puts more shit into the air because tiny droplets of the oil cling to the steam coming out of your uh, humidifier or whatever you're using, and then they float through the air, where, at which point you breathe them in. Like you are literally breathing in tiny bits of oil that go into your lungs. This can be seriously dangerous to your pets, uh, diffusing oils like eucalyptus, uh, tea tree, cinnamon, citrus, pennyroyal, peppermint, pine, sweet birch, uh, wintergreen. All of these can hurt or even kill dogs and cats. Essential oils can also be bad for your health. 
Uh, several studies now have shown that lavender and tea tree oil can seriously throw off your hormonal balance, which may not be a huge deal for most adults, but it can trigger uh, breast growth in children as young as eight years old. And that's for both boys and girls, if that sort of thing matters to you. But either way, it's bad, considering that research has linked that kind of early breast development to uh, an increased risk of cancer. Now there's a new study out with even more disturbing evidence against essential oils. Whether you inhale them, eat them, or apply them to your forearm, uh, eucalyptus and camphor oils may increase your risk of seizures. This study was an overview of 350 patients who had either experienced their first ever seizure or a breakthrough seizure, which is uh, what they call a seizure that happens um, for the first time after a patient has gone a long time without having any seizures, but having previously had seizures before. And uh, the study found that 15.7% of all the seizures they studied were connected to essential oils. And that's not just in patients who had previously been diagnosed with epilepsy. 40% of the patients in the study who experienced what the researchers call an essential oil-related seizure had never had a seizure before, and the majority of them were adults. Over an entire population, this is going to be pretty rare, but it still means that for me, an adult who has never experienced a seizure before, I will take on an increased risk of having my first seizure by exposing myself to eucalyptus or camphor oil, with, with the only benefit being a little relaxation that I could also get from a hot bath. All of those patients were asked to stop using essential oils immediately. And for the next three years, all of the people who had experienced their first seizure didn't have another one. And 94% of the epileptic patients did not have another one, which is pretty convincing evidence in favor of the idea that these oils were actually causing the seizures as opposed to just being coincidental. Here's the slightly scarier thing. Researchers point out that they only studied these two essential oils, but there are many more that are used on a regular basis. Uh, but there's no research on those. And all of these essential oils are completely unregulated. So who even knows what this stuff is doing to us? And in case that didn't freak you out enough, here's one more thing. You can't just avoid using essential oils in your own diffuser at home, um, or and, and you can't just avoid it by slapping it out of the hand of the weird massage lady when she comes at you. Uh, eucalyptus and camphor are in loads of products sold in drugstores around the world, like Vicks Vaporub, for instance, which we rub onto children's chests when they have colds. Does this mean that you should avoid anything with those ingredients in it and panic if you get any on you? No. Uh, remember, this study looked at patients who had already had their first or breakthrough seizure. And, you know, a decent percentage of them, you know, nearly one in five, uh, had just ingested those oils in some way, which is a bonkers amount. But this was still a relatively small study. And when you look at how many people in the world use these products all the time, it's probably a pretty low risk. But still, why go out of your way to take that risk when the benefits just aren't there? The next time you have a cold or you want to relax or you just want your house to smell nice, maybe consider other options before you drop essential oils into your diffuser. And maybe don't let strange women massage unknown things into your skin just because you don't want to be mean.